audience, but we do have our television audience. Good to see you all. Uh, there's nobody here to give instructions to, so we will just forge ahead and let's do the roll call. David Borsak, Ed Bowen, Jeffrey Jones, here. Thomas Spartak, here. John Hens, Steve Cummings, here. Kathleen Prop, here. Gary Graves, here. Donna Laurie, here. Robert Tiger, Carl Mellenberg. Here. All right, next item: approval of the minutes from March 15th. Do we have any to say about those? No approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nobody? All right, let's move on to item one. Review 2016 Annual Action Plan Community Development Block Grant Program. <coughs> Absolutely. System apparently. Pardon? New program apparently. No, he just. Yeah, two different okay. I tried to combine them and it just wasn't working. Wasn't working. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go and I will hit the button. <laughs> that works. Hey, I'm. Oh, we're waiting one moment. All right, Darlene, take it away. I'm happy to sit next to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Darlene Brandt, Grants Coordinator for the City of Oshkosh. Um, the City is uh, putting together their 2016 Annual Action Plan for Community Development Block Grant Funds. We've been an entitlement community since 1976. And our projects and activities need to meet one of three national objectives. That being benefiting low to moderate income persons, aid in prevention of slum and blight, or have an urgent need which usually deals with disasters and emergencies. Our 2016 allocation is $752,818. Talking, you know what? <laughs> we, we we can follow along. Okay. I don't um, know where where is she? I guess that's. Um, well, are we? Somewhere? PowerPoint isn't in your application. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Then that's fine. Then okay. We'll just listen. Okay. <laughs> um, the CDBG program is divided into four categories: central city redevelopment, and we're proposing an allocation of one hundred and ninety-five thousand. We use um, Central City money for acquisition and demolition of slum and blighted properties, um, phase one environmental site assessments before we acquire the properties, asbestos abatement, anything dealing with the uh, acquisition and demolition of slum properties. Um, we have also used it for acquisition of slum and blight prop slum and blight properties in the uh, various neighborhoods. Um, River East, Near East, and then scattered sites. And there were pictures of them, but we're having problems here. Um, uh, our second category is housing and neighborhood development. And for housing rehab, that is our owner-occupied housing improvement program. 
We are looking at an allocation of two hundred and two thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars. And again, that is for low to moderate income home owners who own their home. We come in and we rehab the houses, bring them up to code, siding, roofs, new windows, doors, assist with painting. Um, we also provide down payment assistance for first time home buyers. And those are some of the uh, showing some of the different activities before and after that we have done under the owner occupied rehab program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, also neighborhood initiatives. We are looking at allocating one hundred and forty one thousand dollars. We have used this for good neighbor grants for curb appeal improvements. Um, public improvements at William Waters Plaza, which is in the River East neighborhood. Um, we've done some improvements in the Riverside Park, which is also within River East neighborhood. Um, planning staff works with various uh, approved neighborhoods right now in doing different types of projects, either using the CDBG program or the Great Neighborhoods program, which is through the Capital Improvement Program. So staff works with the various neighborhoods on the projects that they would like to see happen, rank them, and then see what we can do based on funding availability. We also did some urban green spaces in the Middle Village neighborhood. Um, the one is, is basically done. The other one is still under construction. They're very nice. Be done in the spring here. They're very nice. So, our next category is public services. Um, we are looking at an allocation of 110,000 for this year. Uh, these are public service agencies that apply for funding through our public service consortium, which consists of the City of Oshkosh, the Foundation, and United Way. And then we try and make sure there's not too much overlap of funding into the various organizations so that everybody can have some of, enjoy some of the funding and use it. And again, this is all for low to moderate income uh, clients. And then our last category is administration and planning. Um, we are looking at 104,000 for the whole category. 90,000 of that would be for staff salaries and training. And then there would be 14,000 allocated for the Fair Housing Center of Northeast Wisconsin that assists the city with in uh, promoting fair housing, enforcing fair housing, and doing some landlord and tenant trainings. So staff is recommending acceptance of the 2016 action plan, and we're asking that the plan commission make a determination of consistency <coughs> that the proposed programs and activities are consistent <coughs> with the city's 2005 to 2025 comprehensive plan, official maps, and other plan documents. And once you make your determination of consistency, it will go to council next week. And then it will be submitted to HUD on or about April 15th. Jeffrey. Hey, uh, question, I, and I should know this, but do you have to allocate monies to all four categories? We have to tell HUD how we are setting. Oh, I understand that. Right. But what I'm saying is, um, for example, because our, our funding has been cut so dramatically mm -hmm. over the last six, seven years, I mean, this used to be up $1.2, $1.4 million. Correct. Um, I'm just wondering if we need to rethink how you know, we allocate it because these four categories have been the same four categories that for I've seen for, for a long time. Yes. My question is, do we have to allocate to those or can we take something, for example, the, the central city redevelopment monies and move that down into a couple of the categories that 
are more oriented toward low to moderate income there's families caps that have to be adhered to as well for instance public service activities they can't exceed 15% 15 percent of the allocation so there's when you start moving money around yeah. you have to look at how those caps come into play oh, and well. I know there's there's <coughs> caps on the the admin you know right. admin admin is, in planning yeah. and stuff right but right. I was just wondering if there's any any reasons why you couldn't reallocate money from Central City to housing and, and neighborhood development that has more of an impact on low to moderate income families well, for which this is an issue that right. we you know we've talked about and I know you guys have talked about it on, on, on at the council mm-hmm in 2015 um, usually we indicate that we're not getting any program income because we really have no idea if we are or not so unfortunately in 2015 we have two hundred and seventy thousand dollars in program income that we have to spend in addition to our 15 allocation that is broken down into the categories and it's not there's with that kind of program income it's hard to spend all your money in a timely manner the short answer to that is you can we, we would if we didn't want to fund the central city uh, category we wouldn't technically have to fund it it's not it's not required the only the only requirement that you have is that 70 percent of the of, of the black grant funds that go out have to go to low to moderate income benefit a minimum, a minimum uh, that's your, that's your minimum threshold we typically do that through housing that meets a lot of that needs the uh, public services that generally picks up a, a lot of that need uh, so that's why we fund, put a lot in that category and we have always kept a, a small amount depending on how much uh, money is in that program <coughs> in that central city central city is an opportunity based redevelopment fund so that's easier for us to spend money out of what darling was was getting at is we can only have so much money sitting uh, said uh, we have we have a timeliness ratio that we have to we have to yeah. be spending so much money if we don't spend it we lose it uh, as much as you know we fund a lot of housing programs we've funded so many programs over the years and been so successful that when those houses sell they come back in and create a problem for us because it's program income so it's money that we have to spend so in that's why in a, in a short and relatively short period yeah. of time in a period in, yes. in a one year period right. so we could do it but we've you know this is just I, I, I just I mean it, it just seems more logical to me to, to spend more of our money and whether whether that's planning for it I mean in, in different projects or so I'm not saying now but I mean as we go on in the future because this continues to get cut so we have less and less and we have a growing need to try and help lower the monet lower to moderate income oh definitely by families and I was just wondering about that because I it's hard for me to sit there and say, "Yeah, I, I agree with this." When I'm saying 195,000 spent, that's that's not helping the lower mod, moderate income. And so that's why I wasn't 100% sure. I'm not saying it doesn't totally, but I, I wasn't 100% sure if these were set type <coughs> allocations. Let Let me just bounce on that just for one second. I'll get to you, then we can get to you, Kathy. I'm sorry. Um, that 195. Well, when we say central city re redevelopment, that's also that also goes into say if we want to take down a blighted home in a low to moderate income neighborhood as an area benefit, removing slum and blight in those in those low to moderate income neighborhoods. That is seen by HUD as as a benefit to to the low to moderate income. Person, but we're subsidizing the home, the, the the property owner to take down those no. lighted no. areas, or is that city-owned property? No, we tip, we typically will go will go and inquire it. But remember, we're dealing with, sometimes with foreclosures, sometimes with zombie houses. It can you be know. messy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. terms of Kathy, something like something. I was just respect. about to say, there's a huge benefit for slum and blight removal, yeah, and uh, I understand what you're saying, and I fully support. Uh, low and moderate income we used to have a larger chunk of money yes. in the central city uh, redevelopment area and it was hugely beneficial to the city so let's hold on to it as long as we can well and one of the strategic plans for the city is neighborhood improvements as well and right. you know improving the neighborhoods so that's why we're trying to assist with those working with the goals as well correct Donna then Gary 
Yeah, you. Yes, uh, uh, I would be remiss <coughs> if I sat here and did not share with you a, a topic that we had yesterday at the um, Winnebago County Human Services Board. And that was that um, our mentally ill people in town have lost their group uh, place that they went and met and it gave them a lot of things to do uh, through the day they played cards games and so on and so on and because of lack of funding that has been lost so these people now are being transported up to the Nina area where they do have a home but that we're running into trouble with that <coughs> because some people want to stay for a short period of time some want to stay all day and so it's uh, it's something that Winnebago County is looking at but um, as we have a large population and they are centrally located down around the main street area in um, some of our housing it would be a very good thing if we did have a place that like a senior center that these people could go for the day spend time with others and socialize and have something to do rather than just be at loose ends so I bring that to you as we're talking about things that can be done. It would be nice if it could be located in the central area on Jefferson Street. Some of those homes are now getting into um, an area that um, are not drawing people, you know, to buy them. And a home like that would be very nice for these people to go, uh, especially in the winter months when there's nothing to do. <coughs> Um, so I bring that to you because uh, it's something that should be addressed. Thank you. Okay, the city does participate in the housing coalition, so we will just be discussing that at one of our upcoming meetings, I'm sure. Well, I, I think the other thing is we, we've had some conversation with those folks. So mm -hmm. I think they've uh, I think they've looked at public services funding. They've looked at a various. Uh, funded, uh, similar, I think you're talking about the place on Main Street. Yes. We had funded them a couple of years. Well, it Obviously seems that it <laughs> they got to get funds from other sources too. So yeah, well, it's perhaps on our radar. we can. Well, perhaps you know, if you're going to be discussing it, perhaps we can get several groups together to, to meet the needs of these people. Gary, yes, thank you. Oh, no worries. Uh, I have a couple of uh, several, uh, hopefully short questions. Uh, first, first thing though is I agree with Jeff that you know I'm a little bit concerned with the allocation but I'm not going to draw on it because I think Jeff drawed on probably mo most of my, my uh, 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 concerns. Uh, the, quest the first question I have is uh, at the last Common Council meeting the council approved the purchase of a house on Bowen Street mm -hmm. um, and it involves community development funds. Yes. Uh, which category is that money coming from? We were using know? the owner-occupied housing rehab funds. As part of the activity, we have the acquisition, rehab, and resale to a low to moderate income eligible household. Oh, okay. So this is one of the, f this is a first project that we are going to be doing under that category. I, 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 I understand that, but is it coming from uh, category one, two, th oh, oh, three? Housing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain a little bit what the housing coalition is? And you know, I mean, uh, according to to the report, it meets on a monthly basis. Does it? Does it? What, what, what does it talk about? Does it talk about policy or does it talk about implementing? The Housing Coalition consists of a variety of organizations and entities that deal with all types of services to, um, to <coughs> all kinds of <coughs> services for low to moderate income clients. Um, deals with homeless, homelessness, yep. yep, the mental health illnesses, um, uh, just a variety of that organizations that get together, collaborate, discuss, let people know what's going on, who to refer people to. Okay. <coughs> uh, in relationship to that, has the city ever focused on a specific area, like a priority one area, and focus a whole series of programs to help the low and middle income people 
get a, get a better life. So mm. uh, it's all like like mm. a, maybe a, de- a a plan development, yeah. But it, it's maybe m- uh, a bigger uh, uh, fiscal unit or fiscal area than that. We've done that with, under the context of the comprehensive plan, where we've created <coughs> priority areas for. Uh, doing, mm-hmm. you know, working on low to moderate income issues. I think the first one that emanated out of that was the whole Near East neighborhood uh, redevelopment area that came out of the comprehensive plan. So, if you look under the housing section of the comp plan, there are several areas in there that we talk about us wanting to do things into that area to okay. benefit it, the neighborhood. It, it, it just seems like a comprehensive attack on low income areas would be beneficial and I wasn't quite sure if the city has done that in the past um, one of the things I, I do I, I will slightly mention is I do not think the city promotes its housing assistance programs as well as perhaps it could um, uh, I'm sorry that's okay Oh, uh, it, it, on, uh, on one of these, these tables, it, it shows that the uh, estimated <coughs> in, uh, uh, income or receipts over the next uh, uh, three or four years is $2.8 million. Is, is, is that something that's just guessed or estimated, or is that something that is somewhat quasi formal? Uh, I believe what you're referring to, Mr. Gray, is the table that shows our estimated um, block grant allocations for right, the next right, right. five years. Do we know and which? That's, and we don't know what those are. It's oh. just an estimate based on what we've received over the last five years and averaging it out. And Okay, I, I'm trying to find out the page for that, but I guess it does, it's irrelevant now. Um, the last question I have... Okay is in regards to the uh, public service cons- uh, consortium um, I- isn't the amount allocated this year a little bit greater than last year because I, I i didn't take I, I didn't have a chance to take a look at 20 2015 but i think in 2014 it was only seventy five thousand. yes last year's allocation was eighty five thousand. and this year it's up to 110 um, okay. Because of the extra program income for the housing rehab program, I just allocated a little more funding <coughs> to the public service. It's still within the 15% cap, mm-hmm. and it will provide a little more services to low to moderate income public service clients that are in always in need of more money because we never fully can fund what the agencies are requesting. In, in regards to that, uh, what kind of response has the city gotten in regards to applications submitted for this money for this year? For the public service? For the public service. Uh, we, I believe we received 10 applications this year. I, is, is that about normal or a little bit um, higher? Or it's or? about average. Okay. We usually get between 10 and 14 applications. Okay. Uh, the last I'm comment. I, request. I'm sorry. How much was was requested? Um, I believe the request is a hundred and forty-nine thousand, off the top of my head. Unfunded. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 last comment I want to make, and then they can have to fall, is I I want to thank you for going through all these federal regulations because I know from personal experience that federal regulations are not that easy to understand. So thank you very much. Turning over to Mayor Cummings. I just want to mention the house on Bone Street. Was it the 1200 block or 1100? It's 1000. 1000. Yep. Um, we acquired it or acquiring it for 20,000. We think 80,000 to rehab and probably put it on the market for 120 to 125. So we will make a profit from the sale of that acquisition. Beautiful. <laughs> Carl. I just have one question for <coughs> clarification. As I'm understanding it, our motion is to verify that the 
uh, community development block grant program action plan for 2016 is consistent with the Tosh yes. uh, yes. comprehensive plan. Correct. By making that motion, we're not necessarily agreeing with the allocation between the different highline right. items. Right. We may all have different opinions. We all have the right to give that feedback. But the <clears> actual <throat> vote is on being consistent. I, with the I believe that's plan. what we're. Yes. yes, that's my understanding. I'm trying to make sure. Yeah. Second it. Oh, I don't think he's made a motion. Oh, didn't he make a motion? I no, thought, no, he, cause, cause I was thought a he said he made a motion. Are there any more comments before mm -hmm. someone makes a motion? Also move. Right. <laughs> there you go. Do we no, I'll second, second it. I'll second. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we ex that we believe that this is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, call the roll, Deb. Combs. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Oh, aye. Wade? Aye. Lori? Aye. Nolenberger? Aye. Aye. Way to go. Bowen? Aye. <laughs> Boytek? Aye. Married eight zero. Do we have any other business that you want to share with us before we just, formally adjourn into workshop? Just as an FYI, on the next plan which we will have something on <clears throat> country cut, and Gary has asked me this, a uh, comprehensive plan update committee. So I recommend a slate for next time. And I think right early in May, we'll have a kickoff meeting uh, with ESAP. There's travel schedules, vacations, so we're, try we're trying to get that coordinated. All right, Tuesday thank you. Next meeting. We have I, a motion. I, to I, I, I think it's Sorry. good to have it in, in, in May, I suppose, too, in the summer months. Uh, yeah, no, but it's going to uh, I would just say if it could be towards the middle of May, because I have other. <laughs> Not that you need me, but you know. I got to coordinate with them. But see. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Gary. Seconded by Kathy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. We're adjourned. Now we have a workshop.